Um, well, my name's John, um, John Arndt. I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. But yeah, I, I came here really to, to experience building what like true community is, and um, we call it church planning here. So last year we went to a Southern African country and um, we really got to uh, experience um, talking people through reading the Bible and hearing God for the first time. And one of the African mamas that I met actually got really excited about this. She said she had wanted to know more about Jesus and God and so um, was really like an ideal person to talk to because uh, the second we met her, she said, can you come back and tell us more about God? Tell me and my family more about God. So, of course, we were like, sure. So we came back the next day, um, walked her through um, just hearing God's voice, praying, um, reading the Bible, asking what it means, and she ended up becoming a Christian that weekend. Um, we were excited about that, especially because her best friend was a Christian, a neighbor. So we actually, when we left the country, we, we felt really like she was in capable hands as far as like walking the journey out with a believer. Um, I went back and visited about three weeks ago, and I came across the neighbor first. Um, I, I was really excited to see her after, after spending some time encouraging her and praying with her. I asked her about this new Christian, her, her, um, this, this lady that um, came to the Lord last year. And she said, you know, we actually had a misunderstanding. We, we kind of had a fight. Um, she got really upset um, at something I said and ended up, at telling me I could never even come to her land again. She said, I've tried to apologize. Her children have begged her to let me come back into her life, but she's really upset. So me and the few Africans that were there, we spent some time just talking to her about forgiveness. Like if someone even never wants you in their life again, how do you release that? Pray for them, get God's heart for them. So we felt like pretty good about leaving that on her side of the things, but then we thought we'd go over and see how the actual the Afri African mama was doing. Um, so we went over, and and this and this lady loves me a lot. Um, I think part of it's because I helped bring her to the Lord. Part of it, she has a son with my same name, so she keeps calling me her American African son. Um, so when I saw her, I actually she actually started dancing and and just kind of really showing so much joy. Well, after catching up with her, I just said. Um, Mama, if you love me, if you have any love for me, you will pray about your neighbor. Because um, if I go back to South Africa and um, you guys are still fighting and not talking, it's going to make my heart really heavy. And so um, I tried not to like put the, the, I tried not to get into the details of what the story was or um, who was mad at who, who said what. I basically asked her to just ask the Lord about it. And immediately it was like conviction came. She was like, you're right, I've been a fool. I, I vowed that I would never let her back into my life, but I can't believe I was doing that. And so she just immediately said, um, I, I responded. She just responded and said, yes, I, I want my neighbor back in my life. And um, so I left my African friends to, to kind of walk them through um, that meeting up. Again, I just, we just kind of talked about praying over them and kind of um, blessing them and their friendship. Um, we also know that someone who's so new to forgiveness and love doesn't always know um, what it takes to really go that step and forgive. So we kind of charged um, her neighbor who's been a Christian for years and years. We kind of said, we, we need you to model what sacrificial love and forgiveness looks like for her. So it was pretty exciting though, yeah. It was a unique situation because we didn't actually try to get into the details of who did what and try to work through that, um, which I think is really helpful when, when believers do that. Um, for us, the most powerful element, I think, was we were asking them to sacrifice their right to be mad. We were asking them to sacrifice their right to, um, to, to feel valid and, and, and feel like their point of view is right. Um, and I think whether you're a Christian who's been, who's been following the Lord for 20 years or you're someone who just came to the Lord like six months ago, that's really hard to do. Um, and so that's what I feel like we were encouraging in them. And it was a crazy, the second that this lady um, realized that in her heart, that I can forgive even if I'm right, it was like immediately, um, one of the lines she used was, you've brought me freedom. It was like unforgiveness had actually bound her up and she realized that. She had a, a language for that without, without any of us even talking to her about it. She said, you've brought me freedom and, and I'm so excited now about, about meeting my neighbor again. So I think, I feel like for me, one of the most powerful elements in that story was 
the sacrifice of your rights, it actually brings a freedom that some people aren't even aware of.